Welcome to Talkies, interesting discussions with interesting people. Uh, I'm your host, Zachary Burns, and today's interesting person is Lee Martin, a super cool fiber and mixed media artist. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You do a lot with fiber and mixed media and a lot of knit work in your art. Why don't you just tell me how you got started doing that? Well, I've been knitting since I was in college. Um, I learned from my mom. She's actually been knitting since she was a teenager and um, taught me several times when I was growing up, although it never really stuck until I was, I think I was in the middle of finals week and just wanted a distraction <laughs> from studying. So I picked it up and I just started making scarves and then I started making hats and then did that for several years. And then I got to a point where I wanted to communicate a, you know, a concept or make something that was meaningful for me and you know, possibly communicate my passions to other people. We were hiking on this trail and I looked over and there's this decaying log on the side of the trail and it's just covered in all these um, little tiny mushrooms just hundreds of them and i was really taken aback by it because you know they're really small but then as you get closer you just look at them and you can see the striation and the cup the caps and and they're just really detailed despite you know how small and really insignificant they seem you know mm -hmm. and there's really i think something to be experienced by noticing details like that so I started working on um, an idea for an installation, and it actually resulted in these little guys. I don't knock them over. Yeah. Um, so I've got a few hundred of these called Mycena mushrooms. It's a species. We were on a trip in Oregon um, going to a wedding, and I did a couple of installations with them there in the forest along the coastline. That's what kind of got me started three years ago. I applied for Momentum, mm -hmm. Oklahoma City, to do an installation. And, right, and, yeah, I, yeah, I remember so that installation. It was big and epic, and it was really freaking cool. Yeah, and it was <laughs> incredibly fun. Oh, I yeah. I had such a great time. I think something that's, that's really fascinating with kind of what you do with the network and how it kind of ties into the natural world is that what you're doing and what they're kind of representing are both so very delicate. They're meant to look as though they could be naturally existing. Mm -hmm. So it's really, if I were to leave an installation in place and someone were to walk by it, I would like, you know, for them to look at it and think right. it's real and then, you know, inspect it closer and realize mm -hmm. that, you know, these are actually artificial, but maybe get them thinking more about looking yeah. at things as they're walking along, you know, in their daily life. Presumably quite time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the making all the pieces is the most time consuming. The mm -hmm. installation part, I mean, take a couple of hours tops. Yeah. It's really, it's just kind of a stream of consciousness sort of thing. It's really meditative and yeah, I've done some where I just walk along for ages and like, you know, things really feels right. And then you just kind of come upon, upon yeah. that, that log or, you know, mm -hmm. that point in the forest where it's just, you know, the perfect place. So obviously, uh, kind of from what's here and uh, just seeing other stuff you've done, nature is a pretty big aspect uh, of all your work. I was always really interested in, in the environment through middle school and high school, and in particular trees. And um, I actually got a degree in forestry from Oklahoma State University. Um, so that's kind of what my background is in and, yeah. and just that understanding of forest ecosystems and the different components of that is kind of what is mostly informed what my subject matter is now. Right. So y you kind of answered this already that you kind of just slipped into it, but was there a specific moment where you really realized that making art was the thing for you? As once I kind of had an idea and I started working towards it, I just started to get more excited about it, especially the installation process is, is again, as I said, is really fun. <laughs> so um, I kind of had a high from that, really. I knew that I wanted to continue creating things, and it was just a really good creative outlet. Every work that I create is a learning process for me. It's a way to learn about um, some other type of organism or species. Aside from just the creative aspect, it's kind of becoming a better naturalist, I guess. Yeah. So obviously, in a, a lot of your work, it's, you know, it's kind of more 3D uh, or three-dimensional and actually kind of exists in the space as opposed to just a picture that's on a wall or something. Whenever I first started out, I was doing more installation and really it was kind of hard to make my work accessible to people unless they were just able to go somewhere where I had an installation. So um, I've been working on these kind of smaller sculptures and wall hangings. I, I do like that they're three-dimensional and that people can kind of experience um, the installation aspect of my work on a much smaller scale. Being that way, it kind of has a, just a much more tactile experience to it. Um, 
by being, you know, actual objects. Like this is, I mean, this is real wood that you just found, yeah. right? Well, that I've actually been using cork bark a lot, so and this has actually been working pretty well for me because it has more of the look of a really decayed piece of wood, yeah. but it's a little cleaner and it does kind of give it this like a living art piece feel to it, mm -hmm. you know. Especially when I was working more with pieces of wood or bark, mm -hmm. I mean, they, I kind of called them living sculptures, <laughs> I guess, because there, you know, there's a good chance that there is something living in that. It definitely all just seems very intricate. It is. It's and can be tedious. Yeah. Shifting our conversation a little bit, I know I happen to know that you keep bees. It's pretty cool. Um, that was interesting bringing them home. Basically, I went and I picked up this little box with mesh sides and put them in my car and drove home with all these bees buzzing. Being stung was never a big thing for you. Like it's not something that you're terribly afraid of. Yeah, I I had never actually been stung by a honeybee before. Whenever I started, the first time it happened, it was kind of like, okay, yeah, that's that's what that feels like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was something stupid. Like I think I was pulling weeds next to the hive. Must have scared somebody, and they lost their life over it. Unfortunately. <laughs> I assume you get honey out of it. I do. Yeah, I, I was able to harvest last summer for the first time. It was a decent amount. It was enough to sell some jars and then still have enough to keep to use throughout the year. So. Yeah. yeah, that's probably really cool to be like, this honey is from my backyard. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's pretty cool. That is very cool. <laughs> what would you do if you weren't an artist? I'd probably be knitting a lot of sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's coming up for you? Like, are there, you got any current projects going on? The past several months, I guess, I've been working on sculptures for a show that I'm having in the project box, knitting flower heads of different milkweed species that are native to our region with an interest in the monarch migration and the decline in numbers. Milkweed plants that they rely on for their life cycle aren't as abundant as they once were. Draw more attention to those and encourage mm -hmm. people to plant milkweed. Also, and received one of the Downtown OKC Invitational or Artist Invitational Awards. So I will be knitting a vine that will be installed on the Downtown Community Basketball Court. Wh when is that happening? And then that'll start in July as well. Awesome. So, so that yeah, in July and then also <laughs> the project <laughs> talks the in July. Time, yeah, so Great. So July will be a, be a big month for you. Yeah. <laughs> Now it's time for Hitting the Mark, where we give our guests an opportunity to recommend someone or something that has inspired them. So, Lee, what hits the mark for you? So there's an installation in the um, Seattle Olympic Sculpture Park. It's called Noikum Vivarium. It's by an artist named uh, Mark Dion. He has relocated a large, I think it's a hemlock log, and taken it from forest, and it is inside of a building um, where essentially the installation is um, decomposition. I don't know, it's, I find it really interesting because of my interest in yeah. ecosystems and, and interconnectedness and natural processes and impact on the natural world and the things that we do, which I'm obviously very interested in. So. Mark Dion. Yeah. So if anybody is out in Seattle, Seattle. check That's that really out. Cool. Uh, I might just uh, take a road trip and <laughs> check it out myself because that sounds really cool. Well, that's all the time we've got today. I'd like to thank our guest, Lee Martin. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'd like to thank the Paramount for letting us film here today. And I'd like to thank you for watching. This has been Talkies. I'm your host, Zachary Burns. Let's talk again soon.